We join the game in the middle of the middle game, in a position where white is evidently better. His pawn structure is preferable and his pieces are better placed. Still, it is no catastrophe, and black should be able to save the game with good play. B2 B3 Played for several reasons, but primarily in order to regroup the bishop from E3 to B2, to take control of the E5 square, which will enable white to gain the two bishops, and put pressure on the black king side down the long diagonal. Rook f8 d8 Bishop e3 c1 This is the critical moment where black does not have an easy move, but has to think hard about how to counter his opponent's idea. Queen e7 f8 At first I was not entirely sure what the idea was behind this move. Usually grandmasters have an idea behind their moves, always, according to Mark Dvoritsky, but here it took me a long time to see it. It seems that black is clearing the e7 square to create a route for his knight to get to c6 slash d4 to fight for the dark squares. This maneuver takes a lot of time and not surprisingly fails by a tempo. Queen e7 f8 At first I was not entirely sure what the idea was behind this move. Usually grandmasters have an idea behind their moves, always, according to Mark Dvoritsky, but here it took me a long time to see it. It seems that black is clearing the e7 square to create a route for his knight to get to c6 slash d4 to fight for the dark squares. This maneuver takes a lot of time and not surprisingly fails by a tempo. Bishop c1 b2 h7 h6 He saw the possibility of Knight c4 e5 Being met by Bishop c7 captures e5 Bishop b2 captures e5 c5 c4 And decided not to allow unnecessary counterplay Whether or not this actually works is beside the point Calculating long lines here would not be practical While the move in the game can be played without calculation Anyway, the consequences of the sacrifice are Queen c2 captures c4 Rook d8 c8 Queen c4 a6 Queen f8 c5 King g1 g2 Rook c8 d8 Bishop e5 captures f6 g7 captures f6 Bishop d3 e2 Rook d7 d2 Rook d1 captures d2 Rook d8 takes on d2 Rook f1 d1 Rook d2 b2 King g2 f1 Which has won a pawn and the black king is somewhat exposed But the position still has some random character And it was entirely unnecessary to allow that King g1 g2 Fabulous technique by Kligerich Knight f6 g8 Bishop b2 e5 Was also possible, but Gligorik certainly had everything mapped out at this point Bishop b2 e5 Was also possible, 
but Gligoric certainly had everything mapped out at this point. Knight c4 e5. Relying on the coming tactics. Bishop c7 captures e5. Bishop b2 takes on e5. Knight g8 e7. Bishop d3 b5. Otherwise the black knight would get to d4 via c6 and black would have a respectable position. But Onsaker had planned a tactic. Knight e7 d5. Queen c2 c1. Knight d5 e3. Queen c1 captures e3. Rook d7 captures d1. Rook f1 captures d1. Rook d8 captures d1. Queen e3 captures h6. Bishop g6 h7. Bishop b5 c4. Klikarik had correctly assessed this position. Black has won an exchange but is entirely lost. Queen f8 e7. g3 g4. Rook d1 d8. g4 g5. Queen e7 f7. Bishop c4 captures e6. Queen f7 g6. Bishop e6 c4. White keeps the pressure on and will win the game. Black has no reasonable defense against the advance of the h pawn. Queen f8 f7. Bishop c4 captures e6. Queen f7 g6. Queen h6 f4. Rook d1 d8. Bishop e6 f7. Queen g6 c6. Queen f4 g5. Wins the house. 